do you really need to get it together in person for work-related stuff? It's a big question on everybody's mind. And over the past few decades, I have heard more occasions than I would like to admit people say, sometimes you just need to. There's just a need to do it as if something magical happens when folks get together in a room. So I'm going to take my own pass at this question and explain some of my thinking behind it, hopefully challenge some of your assumptions, maybe not completely change your mind, but to get you to think more deeply and maybe a little bit differently about it. But before I do, if you find the answer to this question helpful for you, be sure to follow and subscribe, smash the like button to see more of my content as I continue answering some of these critical questions in the future of work. And if you think there's someone else out there who would benefit from my answer, share this video with them so they can do the same. All right, so let me start off by saying, like I said, I've been doing the remote work thing for a very long time. I've also been in the office. I've been in hybrid setups. And what I can say is it always irks me when I hear people say, sometimes we just need to get together because the short answer of, do we need to get together? My answer here is, it depends. I'll at least give the, it depends. However, the answer of do you need to is no far more often than it is credited. And that's one of the things that always gets me a little feisty. Now that may seem controversial, but I would encourage you to hear me out because the answer to that is more complicated than you may think, but it's totally manageable. And like I said before, my goal in this is to just get people to think more critically about it so you can handle it well, because if you don't handle this well, there can be some serious consequences to you and your team and your organization. So let me also explain, and oh yeah, the other thing too, I, let me clarify, even though I answer with it depends a lot, don't take that to mean I'm a relativist because I'm not. I absolutely believe there are some things where there is absolute truth in that. Whether we need to get together in person for work is not one of those categories that I would put in that. Um, but this question matters a lot, and it matters more now than I think it ever has in the past. One, anybody who has been aware of what's been going on in the workforce is keenly aware of the rise of hybrid and remote work, largely sparked by the pandemic. Even though it was still there before, the pandemic really accelerated this. And companies, even though we've been doing this for several years, are still largely trying to figure this out. And they're trying to answer this question. Do we need to get together for work? Do we not? How do we do this? And this is something I think we're going to be wrestling through for quite a while to come. And that's why I wanted to put this together to hopefully people navigate this a little bit easier. Now, the other thing on top of the fact that this whole surge of challenges and assumptions being, excuse me, assumptions being challenged around this is people's expectations are changing. So even things that maybe before would have been commonly accepted as needs, now people are actually going, mm, I don't know how I feel about that because their expectations of work are changing. And some of the things where they used to work to live to work, now they're going, uh, I mean, I work to live, my work's important to me, but it's not the most important thing. And when that starts happening, you start having people challenging assumptions and asking questions about, well, do we really need to do it that way? And that's a good thing for people to deconstruct some of these things. But what we want to do is help them reconstruct it well. And that's the goal of this video is to help people reconstruct something better. It's not to convince everybody never do anything in person, but more so how do you assess this well so that you can reconstruct something in a meaningful way that's going to drive the best outcome. I think the other reason that this is a really important topic to consider right now is with the rapid advancement of AI, again, so many assumptions about what things are, how they have to happen, are being deconstructed and challenged as AI is stepping onto the scene. And what it really means for people to do their job is changing. And so some of these things, again, where we went, well, this has to be done this way, Suddenly that work is changing and AI is changing the way we're approaching it. And now things that were seemingly so obvious suddenly aren't. And this can be a really confusing, challenging time for people to navigate. So my goal for this is not to go through every possible use case. And the reason for that is 
multifold, but some of it is there aren't enough hours in the year for me to literally try and go through that. And nobody wants to watch a thousand hours of Christopher unpacking every possible scenario he can think of and his take on that. But furthermore, going back to people's expectations, the rise of hybrid work and AI, that video would be outdated by the time I published it. So by the time it hit YouTube, it would no longer be relevant. So what I would rather do is help give everyone a way of approaching situations so that they can look at it objectively and deconstruct what's going on and make the best decision for them, their teams, and everyone involved to drive the ultimate best outcome with this. So that's what I'm going to do. I'm not going to sit and go through situations. I will give some examples, but I want to give a framework to kind of define and help you challenge your assumptions so that you can deconstruct and reconstruct something in a meaningful way. The first thing, though, in order to do that is we have to tackle our definition of need. And to me, this is where things really go off the rail is when things get tagged as needs and need is associated in ways where it really doesn't belong. And I think if we can redefine what we mean by that and give some other categories, it can help us address the complexity of, well, do we what? Um, you know, when it comes to this, when it comes to remote work and sorry about that, my camera popped off and on. Um, but so with that, I think I'm going to give some other categories so that when you approach a situation, you can start to get deconstructed and assess, okay, what's actually driving this. So when you're approached with something and you say, okay, we are considering doing this in person for work rather than say we need to ask yourself, is this just an underlying belief that I have? Do I just have an underlying belief that somehow I can't even articulate it? I can't even define it, but I just believe somewhere in my core that this needs to be in person, that there's something magical, some spirit sprinkles and confetti that happen when in-person things occur that is going to somehow improve the overall effectiveness of whatever it is you're doing. That exists still. I would say it's diminishing significantly, but it very much still exists and I would say if you objectively assess the situation and you find yourself in this category, I would actually caution you to really challenge this. I don't know what it's going to take to change your mind. I really honestly don't. I've worked with people who have been in this category and it's been different how they've had to work through it, but many of them have had to. And what we've found through that process is having this underlying belief in something that you can't even articulate is a bit of a toxic mindset and it's probably holding you back in other areas because if you just believe in ways that you can't even articulate that in-person whatever is somehow superior, there are probably other things that you believe are innately inferior or superior that you can't quite articulate and haven't thought through. So it almost may be a symptom of a bigger challenge that you may need to do some work on and this video is not for that. So. First of all, but figure that out. See what your reaction is. Can you articulate it? Many times, this is the two categories that I see things falling into. And we strip away the need and we start to go, okay, there's two things that are happening when we assess a situation. One is, is it just that's what the person orchestrating or planning things feels more comfortable with, right? And that is a natural thing where you go, you know what? I really can't picture a world where we do this differently or... I don't have the skills. I'm not exactly sure how we would pull that off. That's an okay reason to do something in person, but not just because that's a thing, okay? And the reason I would say that is the expectations, everything going back to what I said before, are changing. And so just accepting that, well, I'm just not comfortable with it, so that's my default. While that can be a better way to communicate why you went the path you did, I don't think it's an acceptable place to stay because the reality is things are changing, the expectations are changing, and you're going to need to adapt or evolve. I think the other thing with making a decision based on you not being comfortable, it means you're not inviting others into that and going, I may not be comfortable, but maybe someone else is. And I'll give an example of this where I was in a situation, there was a leadership meeting happening and we were planning something. And a decision was initially made that we were going to do this in person because we felt, again, it was needed. And as I unpacked that with the group, we realized this really was a comfort. The people in the room were more comfortable 
with that approach than others. They didn't have comfort. They didn't have the skills to do this thing. But because we had that dialogue, I was able to raise my hand and say, well, I am. I know exactly how we could do this. I have the skills to do it. And I think there's a way that we can make this happen and we can do the best of both worlds. You can do what you're comfortable with. I can step in and take over the part you're not comfortable with. And we now offer a hybrid experience that works for everyone. By opening the dialogue, not only did we eliminate the feeling more comfortable risk, but it led to two things. One, we were able to reach a lot more people in meaningful ways, but two, it actually pushed the people in the room to upgrade their skills because I actually had a couple people reach out to me afterwards and say, I actually would really like to not be uncomfortable with this in the future because I saw the value that came from it. And I actually worked with them and upskilled them in how to do some of this work. And so by opening up to the fact you maybe don't have the answers or you aren't comfortable, not only might you get to a better solution, but you may invite some people into the solution that can not only build your skills, but maybe overall improve the quality of the experience. But that's not going to happen if you just wrongly tag lack of comfort as a need. A lack of comfort is not the same thing as a need. And I think by addressing it and labeling it correctly, you can overcome it. The other one is want. Needs and wants are two very distinct things. I'm not going to get into the Webster's Dictionary deference between these things, but sometimes it's just a personal preference. And I've been in many situations before where, again, the word need was used, but really as we unpacked it, we said, I don't think this is a need. I think this is a preference. You really prefer to do this. And the reality is that is okay. It's okay to have your own preferences. But, but, especially as a leader, it's really important that you're cognizant and aware and careful that you don't make your preferences in the things you want and force those on others. And I think that's really, really important with that. And so, you know, if you come to the conclusion, you go through and assess this and you go, you know what, this isn't even a comfort thing or a belief. I just want to do it. If you want to do it, so be it. Take the time to work with the people around you, though. The ask I would have and the thing I would encourage you to do is find out if the other participants share in that want. Just because you want it and you're more comfortable or you want it and it's your preference, is that shared by the rest of the group? And make sure you've built the trust and have the open dialogue where people can say, I don't want it. And there are many times I've been in meetings where a large majority of the group have said, yeah, I would prefer to do that. And I've gone, I don't. And sometimes I have to take the minority position and go, eh, you know what? Sometimes you do things you don't want. Other times more people have raised their hands and said, I don't really want to either. And then that's opened the door to say, well, then why don't we figure something out that works for everyone so that it's more balanced? Now, to be clear on the want one, hey, and this is something speaking to myself, I have to be keenly aware of the fact that my preference is digital. My preference is remote. It's hybrid. It's much easier for me. My comfort level is far higher in the digital space than it is in the physical space. So with that, I'm doing the same thing for myself and I have to be keenly aware of the fact that that is my preference, that is my bias. So what do I do against that? And so this does go both ways. You may be more comfortable with a digital hybrid approach than you would in person. And I, over the years, have had teams who their comfort, their preference would be something physical, being in proximity with one another. And I've had to accommodate and work for that. So I'm taking the same medicine that I'm encouraging others to take and not just going, yeah, you should always consider the folks who prefer remote or hybrid but also say, yeah, but if you prefer the remote hybrid, what are you doing to make sure you're incurring and accounting for the people who would prefer to be in person? And how are you making sure that that's possible? Because at the end of the day, it's about doing what's best for the people involved and the organization. Now, let's say you go through those steps and you eliminate them all. This has nothing to do with some stubborn belief that you have. It's not an area of comfort. It's not an area of want. You just legitimately have isolated this as this is an absolute need. And there are some rare instances where it may be a true need. And if that's really the case, then let it fly. I actually wrote down to try and give an example of this. If I'm being completely honest, when it comes to corporate workplace type stuff, it would take me a lot longer to actually think of a use case where I couldn't orchestrate 
a way to do it in a hybrid or digital fashion that would be equally effective. But I do know they exist. I know they're out there and I know they happen. And I am totally on board with supporting that. When you've gone through this process and actually said, you know what, we've actually gone through this, we've assessed this, and we've determined this truly is a need. If that's the case, then by all means, say we need to do this in person. I think the biggest thing is, though, if you're doing that, given the sensitivity of the fact that not everyone is more comfortable with that, not everyone does want that, you need to make sure you explain your process of how you determined that and the outcome you came to. Because the reality is, that's an important part of any leader's job is to make sure that when they make a decision, they're articulating that and helping bring people in. And maybe what you may find is, you may find out something you eliminated as it's more comfortable or a want actually turns out maybe you catch something that you missed. But at the end of the day, there are times when that does happen. And so to the question of, do you really need to get together for work in person? Maybe, but I would say far less than you think. Now, a couple quick takeaways for those of you who are watching or listening to this. If you're a leader, I would encourage all of you to go through this process whenever you're faced with a situation where you're going, do we need to do this in person? Especially with now all the hybrid and things like that, you're not in environments where everybody's in the office on the same time anyway. So just assuming like, well, of course we do. Everybody's here. That's a bad assumption to make. And so as a leader, you should be thinking thoughtfully and diligently about this before making that decision. And if you do, that you're communicating and inviting the rest of the folks into that discussion and that dialogue. And no, it is okay to make a decision that you just want to do it or you would feel more comfortable with that just so long as you're making sure people are on the same page with that. And if someone has a better solution, that you're open to considering it. Doesn't mean you have to, but at least you can consider it. Now, if you're an individual contributor, this is a process that I would encourage you to think through before asking or challenging for in-person things. Uh, you know, if you're thinking about, hey, we should do this in person, take the time to do this because if you're going to a leader asking to do something in person, they're evaluating the cost and time associated with doing anything in person. And so they are now having to weigh this. And if you go in going, we need to, you have to recognize they may be going, uh, no, we don't. And so you're going to have to be able to articulate why this is a need. And if you're challenging it because something, and I've been in this seat many times where somebody goes, we're doing this in person because we need to, and I'm preparing to go head to head on that and go, I actually don't believe we do. I have to go through this process and explain why and how I've come to the conclusion that this may not be really a need. And here's some creative alternatives. And let me tell you right now, there have been times where I've gone with the clear alternatives and people have said, no, thanks. And I've been okay with that so long as I had the opportunity to actually share that and talk through it. So with that, uh, hopefully this was helpful as you think through some of these decisions. You may be in an environment watching, listening to this where you go, I don't really have to deal with this, but I would wager my bets that every professional out there at some point is going to have to critically think through whether they're going to need to do something in person or not. And uh, how you make that decision is critically important in today's age. Have a good one.